I don't, I don't know if anybody's going to see this or not. I don't get on Facebook like this. I think I, I've actually never done this before. But, um, but I wanted to say that uh, I've shed a lot of tears and have been very angry. And there's, there's so many emotions uh, back and forth uh, lately. Um, obviously, with the George Floyd murder and the pandemic and but but more so you know the, the, our country is is uh, in a very 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 um, bad way right now we we uh, you know I've, 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 I've seen that I've seen that um, that there are so many people that are expressing such hateful things um people that you know that my daughter called my attention to some people that we know and uh and i remember you know chaperoning things at her school and seeing you know and then now to know that those same people and maybe their parents are spewing just the most hateful um uh race racist evil nasty things and and it's um you know we grew up in i grew up in a family that everybody who knows me knows my family my mom's white my dad's black and we all look like all kind of different colors caramel and whatever else um we have always for the most part tried to love on everybody i have too of course i've had times in my life where i've been um where i've been a very nasty, mean person, and I've done horrible things in my life, and uh, but I grew up at, at at a point in my old age, and found out that that's not the way to to deal with your brothers and your sisters. And as being a Christian man, um, there's just no such thing as hating your neighbor. Um, there's no such thing as uh, as not loving on your neighbor. So. It's not, it, there's no in the middle, there's no middle ground about this. There's no, well, I don't love nor I don't hate. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy that people get to where they feel they can straddle the fence and there's no strength fence straddling. Uh, this is, this is, um, this is life and death. And it's been that way for so long, for so long. I remember my dad used to say, to, to, to tell Sorry about that. And my mom used to tell us about so many things that were so horrible that they walked through. And then I remember walking through things when we were little and growing up um, in the different uh, areas where we lived, where if we were in a predominantly white neighborhood, maybe we'd be chastised or, you know, names called bullied. And if we lived in a more black neighborhood, then we were too light and just a bunch of back and forth. But we always did have a defined because of this country um, we 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 claim our blackness more so because that's how we're looked at you know if I walk down into the middle of the street right now and start smashing cars the police are going to come up and they're going to say there's you know we have a black male smashing cars they're not going to say well we have a half white half black male it, it, that's not the way this country works and it's it's uh, so so they so you get tagged automatically no matter what and I'm not mad because I'm proud of my blackness. I'm also proud of my, my whiteness, but you, you best believe most people who know me know that I, I do tend to, um, to raise my fist and herald my blackness a little more, maybe a lot more. But all that being said, I wanted to talk about something else that's I think very important. And uh, you know, my mom used to say this thing, if I would be in school, and and um, and I I did something bad, which I did so many more times than not. But if I was being a bad kid, and then I'd get home, and my mom would say, "Why did you do such and such?" And I would say, "Well, Johnny was doing it, or Frankie was doing it." And uh, and my mo mom would say, "Well, if Frankie or Johnny, if they jump off a, a bridge, are you going to follow them and jump off a bridge?" And we always laughed at that. But it seems that in this time, in our country, still there are so many people, adults, so many people that are leading this country that 
literally must have never had that question uh, asked to them. Nobody ever asked him, hey, uh, if Donald does it, sorry about that, but if Donald does it, are you going to do it too? Or are you going to just be silent and not fight back? Are you going to not stand up for this country? This country is supposed to be something that um, that is for all of us. Now, we know that um, th that's not it's not really the case at the heart of this country is that there's still people trying to step on our backs trying to trying to hold us down and 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 we're supposed to just accept it we're supposed to believe that well that's that's fine you know um and just be happy for what we are given or what what happy for what um what doors they quote unquote will open up for us and that's not right that's not that's not love that's not that's not how we're supposed to be. God gave his only son on the cross to save all of us from sin. And we're all supposed to be able to walk on this earth and achieve what we set out to achieve according to his will, but achieve all those things and walk without the thought that, you know, the next step might be your last step or the next step might be my daughter's last step who for example, my daughter looks completely white, and but she claims sometimes she claims her blackness more than I do, which is hilarious. But but she's just a beautiful girl. But anyways, so so we we sit we're sitting here at this time, and everybody's trying to figure out what to do. Well, let me tell you, I have a uh, I have um, maybe a little advice for what you probably can do. My phone number is on my Facebook. Anybody who wants to talk and have the conversation about race and why we're looking at it this way and why are black men and black women and black children fear, being fearful of, of, of what they're supposed to not be fearful of. Um, if anybody wants to understand why we have these opinions and why we feel this way, call me anytime, day or night. I'm up most of the time because as a lot of my friends know, I have chronic Lyme disease, and so I don't sleep that much anyways. But call me anytime. My phone number is on my Facebook. You can call me. And if you don't want to call me, call one of our, call me or one of my brothers. Or call, um, um, if you're friends with, with my daughter or any of my brother's children, your younger people, then call them. But start having the conversation it can't just be for a minute. It can't just be because one thing just happened. It can't be because one black man just died. It can't be because uh, um, one black girl just got shot in her house by stray bullets, accidental bullets, quote unquote. Um, uh, it, it can't be. It can't be just because a situation that is amplified to you happened that you're that you just make a little noise for now and then it's over. It's not over. This hurts us. This hurts me. It hurts us. And I, I want to love you. I want to love all of you out there, whoever happens to be listening. I want to love you. And I'm asking you to love me too. Not me, Obi, some kid, but black man, Obi. And I want you to love my daughter, black girl, Allegra, and my brothers, Joe, Mark, G, Leisha, Bob, sister, I'm sorry, my sister too, Leisha, and Dre, and uh, there's just too many of us, and all of their kids, and all of their kids, and all of, and, and, and all of my friends, and just, I, we need to love each other, but we need to do outward things. We have to put these things into action. Um, it's not just food for thought. It's food for action food for action. Every day, I'm going to start doing this, and I'm going to try to see if we can talk about food for action, and, and, and how do we put these thoughts and these conversations into, give, uh, and give them some, some, some momentum to go out and hug on everybody, go out and, and high-five everybody, go out there and do something to make a difference in your black friends, and your black families, and your black co-workers, and, do something in their lives. Do something to show that you're not going to let them be kicked. You're not going to let us be kicked. You're not going to let anybody be stepped on, trodden upon, uh, ignored, trashed, 
uh, kicked around, beat up, mistreated. You're going. What you're going to do is you're going to show everybody that you are down a hundred percent on loving on your black friends, neighbors, family, co-workers, and all that exist. And that needs to be a mission. It needs to be a mission for all of my white friends and all of my white family and all of my white neighbors. It's got to be something different now. It can't just be, man, I'm sorry y'all going through this. It has to now be whatever the action is that equals I'm sorry. Rather, it's picking up a phone. Rather, it's standing up for somebody. If you see something happening that's ill, that's, that's, that's bad in a store, if you see somebody getting uh, followed around when they shouldn't be, or if you see a, a police car stopping a, a black person on the side of the road, and all of a sudden there's three cars sitting there with flashing lights, maybe you stole down and pull on the side of the road and see if you can look and watch and see what's happening to make sure nothing bad will happen to that person. There's so many things, but let's have the conversation. I love you guys. Um, family, friends, I love you all. Please love everybody here, not just the white side. Love the love you love love the Puerto Rican, Spanish, Asian America. Everybody, just love on everybody, but especially in this time, because of the four hundred and one years of oppression and inequality. Love on your black friends family, neighbors, everybody. I don't care how you do it. I don't care if you have to jump out of your car at a stop sign and go give some black love. Do whatever you need to do, do it. Put it into action. Put it into motion. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.